Well, welcome to Thursday morning. Uh, and as we continue to study our, our uh, Church of Corinth study, as we continue to encourage each other, I want to also remind you that we have Plaid Kids Crafts today because it's Thursday. And uh, Miss Donna made a cute little thing that will kind of show the kids and remind them about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, and of course Jesus being with them. So you want to tune in and you want to see it. That comes on at 4 o'clock today, then it will stay on. Now yesterday we were addressing what Paul uh, uh, was talking about, and that was the false teaching, all right, the, the false teachers that were going around in the church of Corinth. Now if you'll remember in previous studies, uh, they, they were great orators, they were great with speech. And we learned about Paul and who he was personality-wise. Well, they were very good at speaking. They were like motivational speakers. And, uh, and a lot of their teaching, all right, was not accurate to the gospel message. And they had a little truth mixed into it so people paid attention. They were considered what they call super apostles back in the day. All right. Now, they were super in the world standards. But they certainly weren't super in God's standards. And we know that to be true. And how do we know that be true? If you put a comparison to them and a comparison to Paul, name any of them and everybody knows who Paul was. All right. So the point being is what God considers super, what God considers powerful is not what maybe the world will. So as we pick up in chapter 11, we're going to look at five, verses 5, 6, and we're going to kind of go through, uh, right through uh, the verses today. All right, right. In fact, we're going to go right through 15, but a little bit at a time as we break them down and we discuss them. So we're starting in verse 5 of chapter 11. Got everything ready? Pens, Bibles, uh, journals? Okay. Uh, For I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles, even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. So Paul starts making this comparison, and he's writing in the letter to Corinth, and he's saying, listen, here's who they are, and they're bad-mouthing me because of these things. Well, here's who I am in Christ, all right? He's comparing himself through the false apostles. So we see in verse 7, he says, did I commit sin in humbling myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you. And when I was present with you and in need, I was in burden to no one. For what I lacked, the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied. And in everything, I kept myself from being burdensome to you. And so I will keep myself. As the truth of Christ is in me, no one shall stop me from boasting in the regions of Archaea. Why? Because I do not love you? God knows. So, Here's what Paul was saying. This is what he's saying in all these words. He's saying, listen, there's a drastic difference, drastic difference between me and these, these false teachers. I want you to pay attention to it, all right? And he explains this. He asked nothing from the church of Corinth. He asked nothing. He went in there. He, he, uh, he preached. He taught. He expected nothing. He funded himself and the things he didn't fund. The other, other churches funded for him. And there were, there were those that came and supplied uh, 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 Paul's needs. Took care of Paul, all right, that they didn't have to. Were these super apostles, they expected payment. They weren't coming to the church unless you were going to pay them. All righty. And so they were, they were kind of on a on the list. You know, hey, you got this great speaker here. You want to bring him on? It's only going to cost you 200 drachma or whatever it happened to be at the time. So we pick up now in, 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 uh, uh, oh, and Paul, I do want to say this too. And Paul said, listen, they did it for money. I came and did these things to you with you for love, love of God because of love of the Lord. And because of love of you, I love the people. So we pick on verse 12. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in things of which they boast. 
Paul refused to accept uh, uh, the support. He, he refused to get any support from the church at Corinth. He wanted to show the difference. The false uh, 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 apostles withheld their teaching unless they were paid. All right. And then in 13 he says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their work. So he finishes it with, with these last scriptures then, all right? And basically he's talking about Satan is a deceiver. And he makes himself look good. We always think of Satan as the, the, the red-haired guy with the horns and the, the pointy tail. Well, nobody's going to follow him, all right? It's the one that looks good. He looks sharp. He's got smooth speech. And, 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 and so he's talking about it. But you've got to understand, Satan is a counterfeit of God. In fact, we look at Revelation, you go into Revelation, we have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is the Trinity. Satan, in turn, tries to counterfeit himself as God. You had the dragon, you have the Antichrist, and you have the false prophet. All right, that same thing. So this is what happens. And these were counterfeit uh, apostles. And, uh, uh, and he wanted to make these believers beware. He wanted them to have discernment, that they knew the truth, that they could recognize the false teaching. Galatians 1.8 says this, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. Basically, let them commit themselves to hell. Alrighty. So Paul was really spending a lot of time here in chapter 11 uh, and that's when we read these things, we wonder what's going on. Now, why does, why does, it seems like a very personal thing going on in the church of Corinth at the time. So why does God have it now that we need to be aware of it? We need to be aware of it because it goes on today too. And uh, we don't have enough time to finish those thoughts, but I'll tell you what, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Father God, we, we again, we thank you. We thank you for this Thursday. We thank you for this day. I would ask, Lord God, that you would bless all those that hear the sound of my voice, that you uh, would open their eyes and let your word go deep into their heart, that they could grow closer to you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen. Don't forget, Plaid Kids Crafts today at 4 o'clock. God bless now.